they have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities. And I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. God is not a man that he should lie or a son of a man that he should change his mind. By his own mouth, he promised to make us Hebrew Israelites jealous of another people because our fathers made him jealous of other gods. The words have left his mouth and they shall not return void. Therefore, all the curses and prophecies spoken against us, the children of Israel, must and will come to pass. The fulfillment of this prophecy of jealousy spoken against us, the Israelites, is the key to understanding Paul's doctrine. And Paul even confirmed this himself in his epistle to the Romans. I said then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. But rather, through their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles, for to provoke them to jealousy. For I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify my office. If by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh, and might save some of them. Paul is telling us plainly here that he preached salvation to the Gentiles, meaning the non-Israelites, in order to provoke the Hebrew Israelites to jealousy because Israel made God jealous with false gods. Israel even sent envoys and messengers to foreign lands to call on these false idol gods to come and lay with her and partake of her gifts that Yao, her husband, gave unto her. And thus, in the same way Israel chose messengers and sent them far away to call on strange gods of woods and stones, to bid them, nay, to bribe them with gifts to come and defile her in adultery. Likewise, did God choose a messenger to go and bring his gift of salvation to not a people in order to make Israel jealous. And so, we see Yahushai, the king of Israel himself, choosing Paul the Hebrew Israelite of the tribe of Benjamin as his messenger, his apostle, his emissary, his envoy, to bring that gift of salvation to the Gentiles in order to make Israel jealous and by this jealousy also to cause Israel to return to God with all their hearts. In his letter to the Romans, Paul showed us clearly that the Gentiles he was sent to were not Israelites. Paul told us, I say then, Hath God cast away his people? God forbid. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. Now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world, and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much their fullness? Here, in the first verse, Paul is using the word Israelite to define his bloodline nationality and he specified that he is of the tribe of Benjamin. Again, he used the word Israelite to specify and classify his bloodline nationality which includes all 12 tribes. In the second verse, he contrasts these 12 tribes of Israelite nationality to the Gentiles people, showing clearly that these are two different bloodline people. 
he explained that his Israelite people have become blind and have fallen as a result. And through the blindness and fall, these Gentiles or non-Israelites are made rich and full of hope and with the promise of salvation from Yahoo. So, according to Paul, he was sent to non-Israelites called Gentiles. And Paul knew exactly what his mission was. He knew very well that he was sent to these Gentile nations in order to fulfill the prophecy of jealousy that Yahweh spoke against us, the nation of Israel. And this provocation to jealousy is in fact the key to understanding Paul and his doctrine. For Paul was set up and sent forth to the Gentiles in order to fulfill this prophecy of jealousy against the Hebrew Israelites, the nation wife of Yahweh. And so, because Paul was given that authority to go bring the gift of God to the non-Israelites, he is telling us that he magnifies his office. And we see how Paul magnifies his office by provoking his fellow Israelites to jealousy. He does so in two ways. One, by pulling out from the so-called Old Testament some of the blessings promised to Israel and sharing them over with the Gentiles as part of the gift of salvation that Yahushai sent him to bring. And two, by telling the Gentiles that even though they are getting the gift of salvation along with the promises of blessings that pertain to the Israelites, they don't have to keep the customs and traditions of the Israelites found in the law of Moses. And as the Bible tells us, this is God's doing. For God had intended to make Israel jealous by giving of his goods, his gifts to other people, just as Israel gave of her goods to other gods. And so, Yahoshai Hamashiach himself chose Paul and gave him commitment and authority as an apostle to do so. The Gentiles got the gospel of salvation as a byproduct of God's jealousy against his people, the Hebrew Israelites. The word Paul used in the Korean Greek letter to the Romans for provoke to jealousy is parazelu, which means to provoke to jealousy, provoke to anger, excite to rivalry. Thus, through Paul, Yao has been provoking Israel to anger, to rivalry against a people, not a people. And through that anger and rivalry, God is causing Israel to return to him, to keep his laws, statutes, and commandments, and seek his face. This is the key to understanding Paul. And it shall come to pass, when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse, which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations, whither Yahweh thy Elohe hath driven thee, and shall return unto Yahweh thy Elohe, and shall obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day, thou and thy children with all thine heart and with all thy soul, that then Yahweh thy Elohe will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee, and will return and gather thee from all the nations with the Yahweh thy Elohe hath scattered thee. If any of thine be driven out unto the utmost parts of heaven, from thence will Yahweh thy Elohe gather thee, and from thence will he fetch thee, and Yahweh thy Elohe will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed, and thou shalt possess it, and he will do thee good, and multiply thee above thy fathers.